Hi there, my name is Elliot Moreski and I'm the head designer at the Goldworks here in Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada. And I am here today to show you my new D3DS high resolution jewelry scanner. Uh, I've had it for about a month and a half and it's already completely indispensable. I can't imagine living with them without it. Uh, I've always wanted a scanner, you know, having that ability to, you know, build something in 3D print is obviously a huge um, you know, is a huge thing, but being able to bring something back from the physical world into CAD software and have it 100% accurate is honestly almost just as as important and, and this tool really is doing an amazing job at doing that. So let me get into it a little bit further here. So here's the scanner. Um, this is the scanning area sort of in here and these beds rotate multiple directions. So that rotates, that rotates, the camera rotates, and that's how it's able to get shots of the entire three-dimensional object. Right now I've got the stock alligator clip mounted in here. You basically release these springs. So first off, that's um, magnetic. Sorry, I'm doing this one hand here. But this is the base plate that's got all sorts of mounting options. The biggest one is the in the middle where you can see here it's just got a 10 millimeter square so anything with a 10 millimeter square you can mount in here and I kind of went to town experimenting I 3d printed I ended up actually casting in brass some holders also um, uh, carving wax works really well so this is just really simple carving wax this is set up for a stone the idea is you can really do anything the mounting is very flexible and you know you can go as crazy as you want the general idea is is you want to make sure that it can hold it securely and move it around without any sort of vibration or movement it just has to be held kind of as solid as possible hot glue works this is a little bit of thermal lock that I'm using I'll use hot glue on the stones because it's easy to peel off and I've used it on amylite and some other sensitive stuff and that hasn't been a problem and then I've just built a bunch of different shapes that I kind of attach a little glue to and um, the world's your oyster when it comes to that stuff. The next thing we're going to need to do is give these a matte, this is basically ready to scan. We need to give this a matte finish because the scanner needs to be able to see it and obviously reflective surfaces are a problem so that's what we're going to do next. Okay, this is the developer that we're going to use. Um, I was able to get it from Auckland's Granger. It was very easy. Um, it's basically like an aerosol chalk. It, uh, it comes off very, very easily. You don't have to worry about it damaging anything. Um, I've used it on sensitive stones like opals and amylite without a problem. So we're just going to give a light coat over the whole thing. Try to get the ins and outs and all arounds. And then you kind of blow on it and it uh, lightens up. And that's got a matte finish ready to go for the scanner. Firing up the scanner software, pretty straightforward. The name, we're gonna put the diameter here. The depth, the scanning depth, we're going to make a little bit shorter than the length and the rest we're gonna keep just factory settings. The resolution for this one normal is gonna be plenty enough and then we're gonna press start and away we go. Okay, our item is scanned. That took about 15 minutes or so. Um, and what this is, is this is a series of individual scans all combined together. So that is one for instance. That's another, that's another. I'm holding, I'm pressing shift and left click, by the way, um, to get that to hide. But you may notice that it looks like areas weren't scanned. Again, I set this up for speed, so it could be a number of things. You can add more turns, you can turn up the resolution. And it might also be because I didn't get the developer in the certain places. You can also combine scans which you can flip the ring around, scan it from the back, and combine them. I haven't got that mastered yet, so we're just gonna we're just gonna do it sort of quick and easy. 
First thing we're going to start with is we're going to align it with this A here. We're going to glue all visible meshes and we're going to process. And that's just going to, you see it sort of shift everything into place there. And that's looking better. From there we're going to come in here to filters, remeshing, and then down at the very bottom, surface reconstruction. This reconstruction depth, you can raise the number a little bit. Don't go crazy with it, like 9, 10, 11. And it will do a finer reconstruction, but really 8 does a good job. So you can just leave that stock for now. Just make sure you click Merge All Visible Layers. And we're going to Apply. And it's going to create, it's basically going to fill in the gaps for us and give us an STL that we're, or a solid STL that we're going to work with. So I'll show you, oops. There we go. So that's what we're going to be able to export, which I'm going to do right now. File, export mesh, test yellow ring. I'm going to export it as an STL and save it. So I'm going to drag this file into Matrix, just using the default settings. It kind of throws it out in the middle of nowhere. Um, I'll just center the object. Now, you may notice that funky little northeast southwest compass thing that I um, cast into the ring holder. That is to help me align it. Now, you can just do this manually, but it just helps a little bit to have that thing. There might be a way to align it in the Mesh Lab software. Actually, I can almost guarantee you there is. I don't know how to do it yet, so for now this is going to be my workaround until I can really get that program mastered. Oops. And um, I'm going to get it placed fairly centered. There. So that's looking pretty good. Definitely, you know, definitely good enough for what I need it for. And now you will notice probably it's going to be an open STL. Um, that's just how it exports it. I'm going to come in here to Utilities, Fill Holes, and I'm going to select the mesh and press Enter. It's giving me a little bit of artifacting there, but I know that it filled the hole fine, so don't worry about how goofy that looks. Let me just show you what you can do from here. So I'm going to get this kind of lined up on the ring rail. I'm going to just build some really basic cutters and this is something new I found when I started working more with meshes you can come in here to the mesh menu mesh boolean and you can take a mesh and directly um, cut it with um, NURBS and obviously I took a little bit too much off there but I'm going for speed and not accuracy right now. So uh, obviously you would take your time and do it properly. Let's try this again. Oops. Uh, these two, boom. And then a lot of times what I'll do is I will cut the bottom of the ring off. And I will manually just build a new shank. Um, but from here you can, you know, you can start your wedding band. Uh, project, that's what we're going to kind of do with this. Again, all for speed. All I really want to show you here is, um, oops, do Boolean intersection here and 
what I'll do is I'll bring this into the model just a little bit. Now imagine if it was a more complicated area like this area up here. Actually, let's just do it. Oops, what do I got here? So let's say you had this base plate here to set some stones on. I'm going to make sure. Uh, and I would Boolean difference from that. And look at that shape that gives me. That's going to be a perfect fit up against that. Um, delete input no. Oops. So anyways, you get the idea. Um, and away you go. You just build it up against it. And what I'll do a lot of times is just render it with this in there just render it matte white and that will show up nicely I'll show you an example here um, so that's a wedding band that I did recently and just it works well for the customer they definitely can recognize their own ring and away they go so yeah that's my 3d scanner this is a big game changer for me and uh, yeah if you have any questions let me know thank you